Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of Sigma's 35 millimeter 1.4 DN art lens for Sony E mount as well as the L mount alliance. Right, right, right. Anyway, there's this lens, and a lot of people are gonna wanna know, how does it fare against Sony's 35 1.4? But we'll get to that in just a minute. So what did I photograph this time around? I went out to an artist's studio by the name of Gloss Black. He's the one who was here at the factory painting our mural, which is an awesome mural. We got a video coming out about that. I went over to his studio to use the 35 1.4 to see how it did in a real world situation, and that's why I'm making this review video. Video. Don't forget you can download the sample raw files. There's a link on the screen or down below. Download those raw files, play with them because I used the Sony A1 to take those photos. This is the Sony A1. This over here is a camera that I kind of don't use anymore. It's the Sony A7R4. It's collecting dust. Does anybody, anybody want this? Thumbs up if you want this. Thumbs up if you want this. I'm not actually gonna give it to anybody because it's not mine, it's Sony's and it needs to go back but it's here. So how does this lens feel? Well, let's pick it up. Ooh, it's got some heft to it. It weighs in at 1.4 pounds or 640 grams. It does feel pretty nice in the hands. You have a big lens hood right here. This lens hood, go why do I say big? Because it sticks out further than the lens itself. It's pretty large opening right here. Now in terms of the filter, I'm gonna guess this is a 67. I can't really see. What does it say? 67. That's right, it's a 67 millimeter filter. Now you have a lock right here. Ooh, unlocked. That's right. You can lock and rotate the aperture ring, unlike the Sony. We can lock it. It is locked in right there. Over here, you have autofocus, manual focus switch. You have an AE lock, and you also can click or de-click the aperture if you're somebody who shoots video and you wanna go through the aperture smoothly without them clicking, you would go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put this down right here. I'm gonna grab the other lens that I like to use from Sigma and that is the Sigma 35 1.2 Beast. One day it's gonna crack this and go right through the glass, but this one is a lot more expensive. It also doesn't lock in the aperture ring, but most of you guys wanna see the difference between this right here, and this is the Sony 35 1.4 G Master. That is a very nice lens as well. The Sony here weighs in at 1.2 pounds or 524 grams. So the Sony is lighter, it's slightly smaller, and it is a G Master lens. It has those dual linear XD motors, whereas the Sigma just has the stepping motors. And that's a question that people really are gonna ask is, is the autofocus better in the Sony? It's probably gonna be quicker. Now, the Sony is designed to take 30 frames per second on the A1. This one is probably not designed to take 30 frames per second on the A1. But if I get 15 frames, if I get 12 frames, I don't really think it matters because I'm not blowing through the pictures like that or really worried about it so much. Now look, let's take a look at this first picture where Gloss Black was doing some cutting out of something that he was spraying onto his art. And I'm gonna zoom in. I shot this one at 1.4. Look at the razor blade. We are at 1.4 and that looks absolutely fantastically sharp. Very nice contrast, very nice tones, and nice focus. It nailed it at 1.4. Same thing, went with a horizontal, horizontal, and did the same thing, and you can see the point right there. I love 35 millimeters for photojournalistic type work. No, it's not a zoom, but when I was on the road with uh, Bernie Sanders, I used the 35 1.2 a ton out there from Sigma and was very happy with the results. Even this photo right now of AOC was done with that 35 1.2 behind the scenes in the kitchen before she went on to speak 
fantastic. Really happy, blew that one up to four feet by six feet at my house. Next, while he was still cutting with the razor, I went vertical, stepped a little further back. You can see I nailed focus right on his ring. That's exactly where I wanted to focus. I can't tell you if that was exactly where I wanted to focus or if I was trying to still focus on the razor blade, but it nailed the ring and so be it. The ring looks good. Um, and you can see what 1.4 gives you. He is blown out of focus right there, but it's not distracting. It looks good. Why does it look good? Because it has 11 rounded blades. That's right, 11 blades, Steven would tell you, gives you a better bokeh. Does it? I don't know, looks perfectly fine to me. Continuing on, same, same type of scene, but this is the type of angle I love. These three and a quarter type shots of a subject. Just look how the background is not distracting, but you have awesome separation. You can see him right here separated from the background, but the subject looks awesome, nice and sharp. Love the tones, love the contrast that I was getting. Now, he has a lot of different paint colors set up. Since we're testing stuff, we might as well test it out on the paint colors. And this one is bright purple, not deep purple, Bam, 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 bam. Come on, man. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you Fro Pack 3 in action on one of these photos from Gloss Black Studio. Let's start with Fifth Element right here. That's what Fifth Element looks like. Then we've got Canadian Tuxedo. Boom. Canadian Tuxedo followed by Capone. Look at what Capone does. That just looks absolutely fantastic. Now, Gotham is great for cityscapes, but not always great for people. That's why we gave you a Gotham that's designed just for people, as well as prestige worldwide right here. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you'd like to save even more, you can get the Fropack triple play bundle, which has Fropack one, two, and three all together at a special price. Now, let's get back to the video. Next up, I took a step back while he was spray painting the artwork. Um, th again, this is what 35 gives me. I just love the, the, the way that this looks. And from a distance at 1.4, it still nails focus on him with the A1, still separates him from the background, but I love using things that are out of focus like these tables here to draw me in to the subject. Nice and sharp, love what I was able to get with it. It felt good in the hands. The focus didn't feel like I was waiting a long time for the focus to get anywhere. It just focused fine with those stepping motors. It, the next shot, close up of the color uh, of, of him painting. Now look at the top of the painting. You can see that it's not perfectly straight. I'm not sure if you would get it perfectly straight with the Sony, but this is something that I saw after the fact. That's not perfectly straight. There's a little bit of bowing there. Maybe lens correction in Lightroom would fix that. I'm not a big person, a, a big fan of doing lens correction uh, in Lightroom most of the time, but that's not a deal breaker for me. I don't think anybody's looking at that and going, wow, that painting wasn't perfectly straight up top. Steven wants me to keep painting the picture and this is a picture uh, that's being painted right now by Gloss Black. As you zoom in, look at the tack sharpness and the details that you're getting on the canvas from this paint. Tack sharp at 1.4, that's what I care about. The colors look good, the sharpness looks good, the tones look good. I mean, the raw files look great, you can download them, they come from this A1. Uh, and finally, this type of shot, look off to the right. This, this is Gloss Black looking at his artwork right in front of him. I love that we've got the U-line uh, trolley off to the left-hand side. He's thinking about what he's gonna do next, but look at this red line on the right-hand side. Pretty straight up and down on the side. I'm fine with that. I think that looks good. I'm really happy with this lens. It wasn't like, oh, I'm using a Sigma. This is a problem. Or I should have been using the Sony. No, it didn't matter at all. And where I think it's going to matter for a lot of you guys is in your pocketbook. Why? Because this Sigma comes in at $899. Let me check my notes. It says $899. $899 for the 35 1.4 E mount and L mount. How much is the Sony 1.4, you may be asking? $1,399. So $1,400 versus $900. $1,000, $1,100, $1,200, $1,300. That's like $500. Steven, is my math right? Yeah. That's $500, $500 difference. 
Is there a $500 difference between this lens and that lens? I mean, for most people, I think you could take that 500 bucks and do something else with it. Which one would I go with? I'm probably gonna go with the Sony because it's more expensive and that's what I do. Uh, I, I, I don't know, probably, probably because of the slightly faster focusing motors. But look, if this Sony didn't exist, which a Sony 35 1.2 doesn't exist, I'm still using this bad boy in my bag. I have no problem using the 35 1.2 from Sigma, which means I'd have no problem using the 35 1.4 from Sigma. Flip a coin, save the money. For the most part, I think based off of my use of it, it gets the job done and it does it really well. But before I make my final decision, I got two tests, sniff test and wind tunnel test. I'm gonna do the wind tunnel test right meow because we got three lenses up here. I'm thinking about it. Here we go. Nope, failed the wind tunnel test. Sigma failed the wind tunnel test. That is a bad sign, but how does it smell? Oh. Ooh, super tempting. Kind of like it's sprayed down with some Sex Panther. <sighs> Sex Panther. Passes the sniff test. 60% of the time, it passes 100% of the time. That doesn't make sense. There's a big difference between, I mean, 500 bucks is a lot of money. If you're someone who wants a 35 1.4 on Sony E-mount or the L-mount Alliance, I, I, I don't think you can go wrong with a lens like this. I really don't think you can go, go wrong with it. So that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. If you'd like to pick up any of these lenses on the counter, and I don't mean like physically pick them up, I mean like purchase them, there are links down below. There are affiliate links. They help us to continue to make the videos that we make. Let me know what you think down below. Don't forget, you could always text me as well on my text line, and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.